terms of wellness, the average American, they're challenged with weight issues and prescriptions. How can they get off one track and towards this track? On a daily basis, pay attention to a few things. Good sleep, healthy, loving relationships, movement. Even if you don't exercise, move. Take the, don't take the walkway, walk at the airport. Don't take the escalator if it's only one or two flights of stairs. Make reasons to move. So eat healthy food, move, sleep well, meditate, and be loving in your relationships. That's the least you can do, and it's not you know, rocket science. That'll change how your biology. But then now we can see how that is very much uh, connected to our financial well-being, community well-being, social well-being, those are career well-being. Those are all important components. And there are ways to change all of that. The key for me is that so many people talk about, I don't have time to meditate. Their mind is so active. And I say to them, well, just take a minute mm -hmm. and do that. What do you recommend for modern people to meditate? I think even sitting down quietly, observing their breath, feeling their body, which is really what Vipassana or mindfulness is. But I also think a little bit of self-reflection. Who am I? What do I want? What's my purpose? What am I grateful for? It kind of opens the heart and actually sets off in your consciousness what we call synchronicity so that either you get answers as epiphanies or coincidences or relationships and the quality of your life improves. So maybe 10 minutes of this every morning, observing your breath, feeling your body, asking meaningful questions, and then you'll see that your day is more restful, more energetic, the quality of your sleep is better, and whatever you do is more dynamic and effective. You mentioned synchronicity, and there's an increasing talk about how things just merge together, the epiphany, the serendipity, is that because people are more conscious, more meditative? There's several reasons for synchronicity, but uh, the deeper reason is, of course, you're more conscious, more aware, so you take the opportunity. What people call good luck is opportunity and being aware. That's good luck. But at a deeper level, synchronicity is at the heart of the universe. Everything is synchronized with everything else. So is your body. So when you get to what spiritual traditions would say, your non-local self, your local self is your body, mind, ego, but your non-local self is your soul and spirit, which is like a drop in the ocean of consciousness, then all is one. Your mind, your brain, and the cosmos are one. And so you, in a way, align with the laws of nature. And as you do, your intentions become the trigger for orchestrating the power of synchronicity in your life, what spiritual traditions call the state of grace. So take me out 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you mentioned your grandchildren. It's a new generation being born, born into this awareness. The major advances in the last couple of years are epigenetics and neuroplasticity, which means epigenetics means that your genes are regulated by, your, by their environment. Now that includes, of course, the physical environment, it includes the quality of food, etc., because that goes through our body and becomes the environment for the genes and also becomes the actually the structure of the genes. It's the atoms and molecules that you put inside your body. But what is being recognized is that the environment also includes your mental states, so your thought, your emotions, your feelings. Your mental activity regulates your genes, their, their expression. The other field is neuroplasticity, and which means that you can create a healthy brain, so you can hardwire the brain for a healthy life through emotions such as love, compassion, joy, equanimity, through self-reflection. And then the third thing that's very exciting is the whole era of what is called digital biology. So now we have um, ways to you know, put a small uh, device, which is the size of a quarter, on your chest or your brain or your scalp, and your iPhone or Android can pick up digital information from your body 
10 feet away, send it off to a supercomputer for instant analysis and give you feedback. As long as you don't become obsessive with it, you can use di digital technology to amplify feedback and then change everything that's happening in your body. I think these three developments, bioregulation, neuroplasticity, epigenetics or gene regulation, all in awareness, all in consciousness, will create a new human species. So in the world you see 20 years from now, do you feel like we as humans, enough of us will wake up to have a sustainable, wonderful I think wonderful a lot time? of humans are waking up already in the world, and there's a lot of evidence of that. And there's some kind of way to even monitor that, the quality of your thoughts, the witnessing awareness, less drama, bigger, larger sense of self improve memory, but not victimized by memory, and uh, many other things, synchronicity, these are the things. That's already happening. I think the, the, the kind of dicey part is climate change and the way we are destroying our ecosystem and GMO foods and preservatives. So those two things are competing right now in the collective consciousness. And we need to have a critical mass of people that are in alignment with the evolutionary impulse of the universe and not the destructive impulse. How do you feel health coaches can accelerate the health revolution? I think health coaches are the key, not physicians, but health coaches, uh, who uh, first through example, but then through constant training and reminders and feedback can make a huge difference in the world. They are the key. So if there's doctors or nurses or hospital administrators hearing this, but they feel that they're part of a system that's hard to change, what would your message be? My message would be that uh, is right now uh, targeted to insurance companies more than anyone else. And that is the cover integrated medicine, cover uh, nutrition counseling, cover getting a health coach, and you'll save a lot of money, and uh, you'll be better off, and you'll improve the health of society. So let's start with where the money comes from for all of this. And also doctors would be better off if they became health coaches also, uh, with their expertise, and then use their, thing, their expertise selectively.